In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can use the shortcuts to quickly add items to a Notion database. This will allow you to tap on a shortcut in a widget and enter an item and it will be added to your Notion database. You can also use Siri to call the widget. Hey Siri, add Notion item. Complete video about Notion and shortcuts. So you see those items get added to your Notion database. So I'll show you how to set up this basic version so you understand how the API works and how shortcuts work. So the first step is we need to create an integration with Notion. So visit notion.so slash my integrations. Create a new integration, give it the name, let's call it shortcuts. I'll call it demo in this instance. You don't need a logo. Choose the associated workspace and leave the rest of the options selected as they are and then submit. And then show and copy the integration token and store that in a note for later use. The next thing we need to do is invite the integration to be able to edit the database we want to add to and retrieve the database ID. I'm going to create a new database by adding an inline table. And I'm going to open this as a page. And from here, tap on the share button and click invite and invite the integration that you created. You'll see it appears in the list here. Make sure that it can edit and then copy the link and paste that link into your note. This is for reference later. And the only bit that we need is between the slash and the question mark. So remove everything from the question mark to the end and everything from the slash to the beginning. And that is your database ID. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is open the shortcuts app. And you can do this on iPhone or iPad or the Mac. I'm doing this on the Mac. Create a new shortcut. I'm just going to call this add notion item. And then hit enter. And then we need to add actions to build the shortcut. So the first thing we're going to add is a text field. And in the text field, we are going to paste this code. Now notice that there's an open bracket right at the top and a closed bracket right at the bottom. And within that, you have this parent row with a comma at the end. And this is basically just telling Notion which database to add a page to. And then you have properties, and that's this whole section. And within the properties, right now, we just have a name field. And that name field relates to the title item here, which is name. I'm actually going to change this to item. And you'll see why in a second. So we'll copy this JSON code and we'll go back to the shortcuts and paste it into the text field and then retrieve the database ID that we copied before from the database and replace your DB ID here with your database ID. So you should end up with quotes around the database ID that you copied from the database. And we're just going to leave that like that for now and we want to send this to URL. So search for URL and drag in the URL field. And the URL we're going to use is this one, https slash api.notion.com slash v1 slash pages. And then the next action we want is get contents of URL. 
and make sure that this is linked to the item above and it's saying get contents of URL which is this item and then choose show more and the method should be post and the request body should be file and then you choose select magic variable for the file and choose the text variable so this is basically going to call this URL and send it the contents of this file and finally we need to add some headers so add three items and those items will be the first one is authorization for the key the second one is content type and the third one is notion version so the authorization should be bearer space and then your internal integration token that you copied in the first step and it's not all showing up in here but when I go to select it I can see that it is actually all in there and then for the content type that should be application slash JSON and for notion version we're going to use 2021-08-16 that just lets it know which version of the API to use so make sure those headers are all in there and then finally hit the play button I think on the iPhone that's down at the bottom to run this action it will ask you if you want to connect to the API notion.com so we'll allow this and because we are getting the contents of the URL you actually see the response from the server in the bottom so if you see status 400 it's going to give you an error code and explain what the problem is so here the message is name is not a property that exists so if you remember I changed name to item here so my title column is called item so we just need to change that in the shortcut and where it says name here in properties just rename that item and then hit run again and this time the response is the object that has been added and if we go and look in the database you will see it says your title here I can run this again and you see it appears your title here so final step is that we want to choose the text that appears in the item so in order to do that we need to ask for input so I'll search for input and you can see the ask for input in the scripting section so I'm going to drag that right to the top so we're going to ask for text with the prompt what is your item and then we're simply going to replace where it says your title here select that including the asterisks on the Mac you right click and choose insert variable on the iPhone and the iPad I think there's just an option for select variable so we want to choose select variable or magic variable and then we're going to tap on provided input so you can see the content is now going to be the provided input so now when we run this we get the prompt what is your item item for notion demo hit done you can see there was a success and now when we go to notion we have our item for notion demo let's do one more test another test and this worked you can see it in here now just a note for some of the things that might go wrong with this if you run this and you have multiple lines of text and we hit done you can see there's an error code invalid JSON and that's because it doesn't like line breaks in this provided input so this works so long as you provide a single line of text for your item